Well, I was so ready to drag Miss Shannon Bedore for filth, but even I can't deny she looked good at that final party. Ooh, that slow-mo entrance, that power bounce hair. Wow. It's it's something I can't deny, and I'm ready to drag Shannon. You know me. I feel like she never has to really answer for her own behavior. But her performance in this premiere, I was like, damn it. I think she might be crushing this. Because Alexis being there makes us feel bad for Shannon. Because Alexis being there being like, ooh, John Jansen is the prize. Ha, ha, ha. I got John Jansen. Well, we're like, keep him. You, you Really, you can have him. So she just looks kind of pathetic and all the other women aren't talking to Shannon. So then it looks like Shannon's getting ganged up on and your natural instinct when that happens is to want to be on their side. And then she shows up looking like that. It's like, well, even I can't deny she slayed that. (sighs) Damn it. All right. It was a really good premiere, though. Let's get into that right now. This was one of the best cold opens ever. Well, I mean, no, a lot. We've seen a lot of good cold opens. It was just a really good cold open. Um, It's the reunion segment from last year. Shannon being like, oh, uh, for you to say that I'm calling people and for you to say I need to breathalyze, like being so offended. And then 10 days later, boom, all the DUI stuff, the news reports. And then we see flashes of, I'm assuming, scenes to come. Uh, But it's a flash of Shannon telling Heather the story, how John called me a drunken idiot. And then the photo. The photo that Shannon shows Heather. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll put it up. But in the police report, it said that Shannon was acting like she was walking her dog when the police arrived, trying to be like, oh, just walking my dog. But the woman was like bleeding from her face. So it even is more batshit crazy that she thought she could be like, just walking my dog, just take it. Oh, oh, hey, officer. Oh, that. I don't know what happened down there. Lady, ma'am, you're bleeding. Whoa. Crazy. Uh, And then Emily and Shannon are it's a it's a just a flash of this. Actually, I think this might be all we get are flashbacks of this scene. But it's Emily and Shannon at lunch and Shannon saying because Emily's like, do you drink? And she's like, I have a two drink maximum. And Emily being like, do you think maybe sobriety would be a good idea? No. okay." And Shannon's confessional. You can plug and play this confessional into other seasons, too. You probably could have just used footage from an old season. But Shannon going, I am done with people saying that I am this drunk that needs help. Because I am not. I had a really bad night. And that's it. Credits. Yeah, that's that's it. It's just one bad night. This hasn't been a through line for your entire duration on this show. No, no, not at all. Your drinking hasn't come up every single season. <laughs> no. What? Of course not. Not at all. No need to look at that. The very first scene we get as the gr- in groups, if you will, is a Jen and Tamra meeting at the gym moment. And I'm like, oh, I guess they're cool now. But Jen's like, I see Tamra for who she is, so we're fine. But basically, like, I don't need that enemy in my life is what she's saying. But Emily joins them. Emily, who is 40 pounds down. If you follow her on Instagram, you see her posting her workout videos. I fucking love her workout videos. I don't know what it is. I just love them. I think she looks like such a badass, so powerful. But Shannon has a scene with her gorgeous daughters. My word. Um, Archie is there. I'm so happy to see Archie just there at home with his family. But Shannon gets a chance to, like, cry and apologize to her daughters for you know, being 59 and getting a DUI. And then she gives us what she tells us what happens. John did call her a drunken idiot and actually even told her not to get in the car. And to prove that she was going to be able to get in her car and drive, even though he was telling her not to, 
she revs her engine and loses control immediately. Now, because no one was hurt, so I keep prefacing this, because no one was hurt besides Shannon, I can laugh at this because the thought of the scene going like this in my head, he's like, you drunk idiot, don't get in that car. Oh, really? Watch this. Room takes off, loses control. Then gets out of the car and starts to pretend to walk her dog when the cops get there. I'm sorry. That's just, it's so Shannon, I guess. I guess who else would it be, right? But Shannon's like, yeah, I'm seeing who my true friends are now. And we cut over to um, Tamara, Jen, and Emily again. And you see Shannon's actually been taking Jen's yoga classes, which I think was a smart move because she could have taken yoga classes from anybody, but it was smart of her to get this little alliance with Jen or just to enforce it or reinforce it for sure. Um, And we get a flashback of that and Shannon telling her that she's still doing she's still going to the therapist and the psychiatrist that she was going to when she was at the wellness center. Okay. Um. But Tamara is no longer doing Trace Amigas and tells the story of how the show they did right after the DUI, Shannon was like sneaking alcohol and putting it, putting it in there. And she just felt like it was it just felt wrong because the show had a lot of alcohol jokes and, you know, whooping it up, that kind of stuff, which makes sense. Right. That's what their brand is. Trace Amigas came from just like doing shots of tequila. So it makes sense. So Tamara had said to her some had said to Shannon, like, are you sh- this is something is this the look you really want right now after your DUI? Like, is this really maybe this isn't the best idea? But Shannon was like, what do you mean? So they parted ways. Vicky and Shannon are an alliance. Tamara has since pulled Emily to do podcasts. I think it's Emily and Emily and someone else doing podcasts. And anywho, um. That's that alliance. Shannon did go on Watch What Happens Live uh, and say that she didn't she wasn't like sneaking the alcohol, but she didn't deny drinking the alcohol. And I think everyone is in the same boat as to thinking like, what else would necessarily need to happen for you to realize that you just shouldn't drink, period? And that because for Shannon, it's drinking is a problem, period. And so it would just be easier to work on yourself and your issues if you just took it out. Just don't drink. Um, but she's she's like, you will not pry the martinis out of this woman's hand. She will ha- or her Grey Goose or whatever it is that she orders, her Belvedere. I don't what's her what's her vodka? She has a very specific order. But um yeah, I I feel like it would be a little bit more um I would prefer it if she wasn't drinking at all. I, but what what does it matter what I think, right? It just optically and also, again, it's like it would really show that she gets it, that she gets that this is a very big deal and a very big problem. I'm thinking that she thinks it was like a John Jansen problem. And now that John Jansen's out of her life, not by her own choice, though. She didn't choose that. He actually broke up with her. Um, And Shannon is surprised that she hasn't heard from any of the women, especially after... Alexis and John have been all over Instagram posting about their creepy romance. Um, but ten, J- Shannon lets us know that 10 days after her DUI, he John called her to say that he's cutting ties. You've ruined my life. You've ruined my family's life. Um, because, the, because of the publicness of who you are, because of how public you are. And then he goes and gets with the woman who's now going to be back on Orange County. Alexis. It doesn't even make sense. Six weeks later, they're dating. And for Shannon, she's trying to claim, and maybe she's, maybe this is true. Maybe this is really how she feels. But she's trying to say that her issue is with Alexis isn't even the John Jansen of it all. It's the lawsuit that she was in with El- her husband, Jim Bellino, and Tamara. Um, but according to Tamara, Alexis was like, I had nothing to do with it. We were divorced by then. So I don't know. In the final in the final scene with Shannon and Alexis, Alexis seems really confident. The way she's like, go ahead, dig it up. Dig up that piece of paper. I'd love to see it. I was like, oh, I think she might be right. Maybe, maybe Jim like 
just added Alexis in there, but that she didn't like sign. I don't know. Like I, Alexis seemed very convincing about that one thing. It does. It does a little bit seem like a reach from Shannon. It does a little bit because the lawsuit literally was with Jim, not Alexis. Um, but I'll take it. I'll take it, Shannon. Go ahead. The deflecting is what she does. The issue really here is the lawsuit from three years ago that's been settled that Alexis was actually not a part of and didn't benefit from financially at all. Cool. Got it. Now to Heather and Terry, which I'm intrigued. I, I'm intrigued by the fact that they just blatantly live in Los Angeles, blatantly live in Beverly Hills, L.A., but are on Real Housewives of Orange County. I'm like, what? A, that's a lot of driving. It's not an easy. It's that is not an easy rut. A drive to Orange County from L.A. is like hours, at least one, depending on exactly where you are in L.A., but from where I am with traffic, uh, you can be looking at. An hour and a half, two hours. But at least an hour. Over an hour for sure. But they've got a penthouse in L.A. It's only two bedrooms, though. So this is their family home. And their running total for the renovations are, it's like over $32 million. <laughs> Kill me. It's just so crazy. Ace is fucking 13. Sorry, I'm trying not to cuss so much, but 13. When they, and I think that's what's the craziest part about Housewives are the kids growing up because, you know, kids grow so fast and it really puts the time lapse into perspective where you're like, I remember when you were like born. And so that is kind of nuts. That's that does that. that, that, that it's kind of like they're like our kids. They are. They're also at the Balboa Bay Club. Which is so like mm, I so I, the Balboa Bay Club. That's so like mm, okay, cute. I like it. That's so they can see Terry's mom more often. And Terry's mom, they show a little flash of a dinner. She looks very much like Terry. The resemblance is uncanny. I felt like such an influencer. I went over to my friend's house, and he had hop water in his fridge. That's because I'm the one who introduced him to hop water. I'm like, it's the best, right? He's like, I love it. I'm obsessed. He was a big beer drinker, and now he doesn't drink anymore, so hop water is perfect, perfect for him. I wasn't even a big beer drinker, but I love the hop water. Hop water is a non-alcoholic sparkling hop water that blends hops with adaptogens and nootropic. And these ingredients have mood-boosting effects. I'm telling you, I feel like a happier person. It may just be in my head. But even my friends who've had it agree. Hop water is crafted without alcohol, calories, gluten, or sugar. Hello. And all the flavors are so good. I love ruby red grapefruit, but also mango is very good. So now I've got friends on it. You guys should try hop water too. Right now, Hop Water is giving my listeners a special offer. Order through my exclusive URL, hopwtr.com slash she speaks. You get 20% off your first purchase, plus access to special flavors that are only available online, and free shipping if you order 24 cans or more. Don't wait. Order now at hopwtr.com slash she speaks for 20% off. Off. That's hopwater.com slash she speaks. Gina goes over to Emily's and Gina, it, I'm telling you, this is why Gina got another season because the DUI of it all, like Shannon and Emily had this whole thing with the DUI that Gina had and how Shannon was like, Child Protective Services was going to be called. Um, so that's why I think Gina got another season because she to me, she just doesn't although she does have a lot going on. She is leaving Travis. So maybe yeah, we'll see here. But someone saw Shannon at the grocery store with a cart, quote, full of booze. I'm like, what was in it? Like, was she throwing a party? which would also be kind of nuts because she just got the DUI. But like, what kind of booze? Is it like a bunch of bottles of vodka? I was fascinated by this because that's that's a big statement. A cart full of booze, full of booze. Even just one bottle of alcohol is like, whoa, okay. For Shannon, like if I saw Shannon, if I saw Shannon in a store and she happened to be buying alcohol at that point in time, I'd be like, mm, okay, you know what I mean? But like a cart full of booze, what do you, what does that mean? mean? <laughs> I don't know if I buy that. That's that's some good tea, though. That is like it was like Jen's brother's friend or I don't know, someone like that 
saw her at the grocery store and said it was full of booze. I'm like, how many bottles of vodka? Must know. But Gina then talks about her issues with Travis. Now, I forgot. I remembered vaguely something was going on with that guy and the ex and all that. So I pulled up an article about it and let let the the, the headline. This is by this is realitytea.com. Shout out. The headline is Gina Kirschenheider's man Travis Mullen granted restraining order against ex-wife after social media attack. So the split was in he filed for divorce from Megan in 2017, long before connecting with Gina. Uh, the former couple have joint custody of their three kids. In the filing, Travis alleged Megan was arrested for violating a criminal protective order protecting me from her. She has also threatened me and my family and has engaged in a campaign of harassment, unwanted contact, attempted extortion, and threats of harm if I do not comply with her demands. He explained that the restraining order was necessary because, quote, I am fearful that in its absence, she will continue to harm and harass me and our children because she is continually and is increasingly harassing and harming me, even with a criminal protective order in place. Travis then added that Megan's behavior had created a, quote, dangerous environment for our children and me. He also cited a domestic altercation back in October of 2021 in which he was involved. A criminal protective order was then issued in May 2022 and then again two months later. An alleged violation. Oh, sorry. Hold on. But the 38-year-old house boyfriend. Whoa. Whoa. Claimed that his, instead of saying house husband, God, okay, no need. The 38-year-old house boyfriend claimed that his ex violated said order when she came to his neighborhood in August of 2023, which would, maybe this was like the catalyst for Gina being like, maybe we shouldn't do this. Travis immediately called police, and upon their arrival, Megan was taken into custody. Later, she was released without posting bond. Additional details of the petition include the claim that Megan made some troubling Instagram posts alluding to taking her own life. She also referenced both Travis and Gina by name and accused he and Gina of abusing his children. That's what I remembered. I am fearful of Megan's harassing behavior and threats directed by her to me, Travis wrote in the petition. For her part, Megan has fought back against the order. The court has since granted the protection order for Travis, but it does not extend to Gina and her children. So that was a little eye opening. Um, I did. Va- I vaguely remembered the abuse allegations. And then I like something like this came out. This article, by the way, came out on October 16th, 2023. So there was some shit going down. I did not dig into who the ex-wife is. I didn't try looking her up or anything. I forgot. Like, I forgot that's part of this job. (laughs) But I didn't do that. I didn't look her up. But anyway, so she sounds very scary. And so it's for that reason that Gina is like, we need to just be separate. Because also, it's about like the house, too. They've got so many freaking kids. And they're bigger now. So they need a bigger house. And in order to accommodate said a load of people... Um, they can't afford it. So she's like, so, which is also kind of an interesting point. Like, we can't afford to all live together. So we're just going to get two separate places. Like, you can afford that? Hmm. But it sounds like this ex is really scary. And her kids, Gina's kids have been through a lot. So... Ryan and Jen go to dinner. He's a creepy, creepy man. Apparently, though, last year, the <clears throat> excuse me, the owner of Jen's house, excuse me, that she was renting, sold the house. And so she reached out to Gina to get her a new house, gets the new house, then proceeds to not be able to pay the rent and is now being evicted. It's like 24K in rent that she said something like something like that. So the deal is will her ex-husband, he was the main breadwinner, but he's not submitting his financials for the divorce proceedings, which I'm like, uh-oh, was he secretly, like, stashing the money? Is he broke? But Will Will was supposed to be paying the rent for their house, and he fell behind on the rent, and now she's got her dad helping her here and there. But Ryan's like, the solution is that you guys move in with me. 
And Jen's like, I don't know. That sounds that sounds bad because what if something happens between us? And he's like, you're thinking of the worst case scenario. You know, nothing's going to happen between us. And it's just so ironic that the stuff with um, Olani, the Dodgers pitcher, is then connected to him. If you if you don't know what that is, the whole lawsuit is that. Um, and sorry, his name is Otani, not whatever I just said. Um, the lawsuit is that Otani's translator was stealing his money and like posing as him and totally violating the trust, just being like, yeah, no, he wants me here. He's going to sign all this money away to me. And it came out when they traced the money, it was getting some of it was getting sent to Ryan and his like business partner. Uh, I think it was for placing gambling bets or whatever, but it was like in the millions. So he's he's named on this lawsuit. But I think he's already said that he's going to be he's going to talk because I don't think he think he I don't think he knew what was happening. I don't think he knew that it was money being stolen from someone else. So I think he's going to talk and say whatever he needs to say to get out of it. And they're going to like give him some exemption. I think I think that's what's happening. Next, Heather and Emily have dinner with Alexis. And Heather is a, apparently Heather is like kind of friends with Alexis and has been for years. I mean, they both have trans children. So maybe that's the bond, which is awesome. Pretty cool. Um, but Heather's all annoyed because when she told Shannon that Alexis was invited to her party, Shannon got like mad at her and made her like the bad guy. So I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy now. Um, because Shannon was just like, I'll have to get back to you. I'll have to get back to you. When she finds out Alexis is going, I'll have to let you know. Uh, but Alexis's mom has died. And you know what's so interesting is it just happened to start playing after something I was watching, I think on Hulu. I don't remember what. Uh, but that show, the um, uh, marriage boot camp or celebrity edition, or it was something like that, but it was Alexis and her mom. It was also like Kendra, Girl Next Door, and her mom, Um it was whatever that season was. It was kind of a like powerhouse season of of a cast, but I couldn't get into it because there's this very inappropriate voiceover that's narrating it like like it's a like it's a wrestling match. It's like up next we got Alexis with her mom. Are they gonna work out their problems? Let's see <laughs> the whole way through. But it's like really heavy material, so it was very bad. Um, but it's Alexis and her mom on this show, and apparently. Like Alexis had an issue with her mom. Her mom cheated on her dad. It was a whole thing and this fucked them up or whatever. So anyway, that woman died. And that's the only reason I have any context for it is just because it happened to come up on my screen after something else was played. But John has just got Alexis this promise ring. Now, I didn't realize this was like one month into dating, like one fucking month. Alexis is presenting John in her confessional. Like She's like, November 18th is the day John Jansen walked into my life. And we're here. We're here. Get used to it. The heart wants what it wants. Okay. But then Alexis gets all confrontational with Emily for the podcast that she did with Tamara, um, where Emily called him. She found out that he was going to be filming. And she's like, what a doucher. But Alexis comes in hot. And she's like, I just want to know where you get your information about John. And then Emily's like, well, I've been around for three years. So I've seen him. And then they also flash to when John uh, John was like, fuck Gina, she's not your friend, we're done with her, looking like a prick, I'll say that much. And Alexis goes, that was a private conversation he was having with his girlfriend at the time, standing up for her. Okay, to say it was a private conversation when he was mic'd up on camera is a little stupid, Alexis. And then Emily's like, well, look, all I've heard from Shannon is that he doesn't pay for anything. He takes advantage of me, whatever. And Alexis goes, well, do you trust a drunk who just got a DUI? You trust her opinion? What the fuck? <laughs> My goodness. Okay, guess not. My Lord. I don't know if that was necessary. And I, you're you're going all in for John Jansen and you're trying to like revive revamp his career and rebrand john jansen to the audience essentially no heather does get to she's like i am the only thing i'm worried about is it a little fast mm -hmm. but she's like nope just please just give him a chance i call him johnny j now so that's his new name that's his rapper name johnny j he wears gold i, I imagine a johnny j wearing like gold chains and looking like 
an idiot. That's how Johnny J sounds stupid. Emily asks, like, okay, how do you feel about Shannon going to the party? And she's like, I'm not going to let her pull me into her spiral. And everyone's sort of probably thinking the same thing. You know, Shannon's going to come in, do one of her Shannon freakouts. And Shannon knows that. So Shannon's like, watch this, motherfuckers. And I'm like, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Shannon lets us watch a fake meeting with her lawyer where they discussed nothing of true importance. It was just so that she could show, like, here's me meeting with my lawyer. I've got community service. I've got however many months of alcohol school or classes or whatever. I'm getting my life together. Here's it. I mean, like, the, the lawyer didn't really say anything, but that was, like, important. But I was like, ah, fair enough. I get this scene. I get why you had to do this. Tamara, we have Sophia now on, on camera. Tamara takes Sophia to get a tattoo and it's a big deal that Sophia is able to film now because she's 18. She doesn't have to get a- approved by Simon. But she, Tamara tries to bring up Simon. Sophia shuts it down. Oh, okay, okay. And then Tamara, again at the tattoo shop, tries to bring up Sydney. And Sophia just shuts down. I'm like, Tamara, you are pushing it, girl. I am sure Sophia told you I don't want to talk about my dad and I don't want to talk about Sydney on camera, period. And what do you do? You bring it up. And she has and she gave her nothing. Sydney even says, remember how like there are some things you shouldn't tell me and you should tell your therapist? Mm hmm. Like that. Like that's it. Because Tamara starts crying and she's Sophia just like looks at her like, mm hmm. Not doing it. Not taking the bait. I am currently revamping the merch for She's Speaking because we did the rebrand and we use Shopify for our online store and it is so user friendly and so customizable and it integrates so easily with the warehouse that we use to sell. Shopify has a million tools that make your business grow, function and just operate with ease. Like you can grow your average order value with the Shopify bundles app where you can create and sell products in bundles, no problem. And now Shopify Magic, you can whip up captivating content that actually converts from blog posts to product descriptions. That's a big one. You can generate instant frequently asked question answers, pick the perfect email send time. Plus, Shopify Magic is free for every Shopify seller. And Shopify grows with your business. So no matter how big or how far you grow, thanks to an endless list of integrations and third-party apps, anything you can think of from on-demand printing to accounting to chatbots, everything you need to revolutionize your business. What about marketing made simple? Shopify takes the guesswork out with built-in tools that help you create, execute, and analyze your online marketing campaigns. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash she speaks, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash she speaks now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash she speaks. I can't believe it's taken me this long to figure out that I could use the wild grain bread that I bake from frozen in 25 minutes. I could use that for my toast in the morning because I'm on an egg and toast kick for breakfast. Hello. It's delicious. Slice it up. And you see, Wild Grain is the first ever Bake From Frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, artisanal pastries, and fresh pastas. Every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less. No thawing required. So you can just put them in the freezer, forget about them, and when you need them, they're there. And your wild grain box is totally customizable. You could do all breads, all pastas, all pastries, or mix it up however you want. And wild grain just launched a brand new plant-based box, which has a huge selection of plant-based pastries, breads, and hand-cut pastas. For a limited time, you can get $30 off your first box, plus free croissants in every box. When you go 
to wildgrain.com slash she speaks to start your subscription. You heard me. Free croissants, delicious croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash she speaks. That's wildgrain.com slash she speaks or you can use promo code she speaks at checkout. Travis and Gina do have a pretty sad conversation. It's clear Travis is not happy about this choice, but he keep, he says, like, I know it needs to happen. And I'm like, oh, that's not easy. And it's all because of his ex-wife. Like, I hope we get a little more juice on that. Alexis and Emily, they ride together in the car, and Alexis keeps finding any goddamn opportunity to talk about John and how, like, hot their sex life is. She's like, oh my God, I'm so tired. We just like did it all night. I'm like, I don't need the visual of John Jansen and you. Well, no, thank you. Gina at one point talks about how, because she, when she meets Alexis and Alexis is like, John Jansen, John Jansen. Gina's like, I don't give a shit about John Jansen. And I don't even care if he has a big penis, like everyone says. I see an OnlyFans account coming for John Jansen. Mark my words. But Gina, she arrives with Katie, who's also Gina's age, 39, which I do think is fair. They do need to like, if they are going to have Gina there, they do need to level it out a little bit. But Katie's actually Sutton's friend. And they got connected through her, which is, just, you know, the Bravo verse. <laughs> I love Heather not putting her name or her initials on anything because Emily made fun of her for it last year. Clearly, she had to like think about that. She's like, well, she wasn't wrong. Like it, that was a read and noted, noted. Uh, Gina, though, she sees Jen and she's like, oh, dear. And Gina gives her perspective on the house thing. And she's like, I got her this house. And then I'm CC'd on all these emails about how they're not paying rent. And she's like, this is my reputation, my real estate license reputation. And yeah, that's not great. She's like, I vouched for her. And now and like they haven't even talked about it. And she even says, like, I'm not sure if Jen even knows all this is actually happening. But, but she knows. The ladies are talking about Shannon um, because Emily had that lunch with her and stuff. So they're talking about Shannon and, and Emily's like, yo, yeah, she says she has a two drink maximum. And Tamara goes, per hour? Oh, it's going to be like that. It's going to be like that this year. They give Shannon an entrance to end all entrances. The bounce, the bounce, the bounce in the hair. It was incredible. Emily just starts like feeling Shannon up. Like she's like, your boobs, your bo Oh my God, you're so skinny. Um, but Gina lets her know. Gina's like, I actually feel really bad for you because, and she kind of like motions, Alexis is back there. And they cut to Alexis at like the tarot card reader or whatever that was, right? That was the tarot card reader who says something about how you've got a new boyfriend and he needs to work on communication. And Alexis is like, he's literally the best communicator ever. Got it, girl. But Shannon brings up the DUI she does to the people that she's talking to. She's like, I think it's Emily, maybe Katie and Gina. And that it's the darkest time she's ever been in. Uh, but then she goes on, but I think that was my sign that it was time to cut ties completely with John. I'm like, didn't he break up with you? But nice, nice, nice try, though. Nice try. You just told us he broke up with you. But, you know, it's OK. Gina's like, I mean, you look great. You know, you're obviously making changes. I never want anything like bad for you. And Shannon goes, yeah, and you and I have had some fun times together. I'm like, you have. But you've also had a very contentious relationship, Shannon. And you're really trying to overlook. You know you owe her a big apology. You know you do. But you refuse to give it because then you, ne you never admit when you're wrong. But all Shannon says is because Gina goes, I just never know where we are. And last year really threw me for a loop. Shannon goes, and I apologize for any and everything that I did to hurt you because I don't want to hurt people. And Gina's like, that's all I ever wanted. I'm like, it wasn't really that killer of an apology. But you know what? If if that's how it is, well, you're just going to take what you can get. I also kind of get that, too. So take it, I guess. Gina really does. Let, she lets some stuff go pretty easily, doesn't she? Uh, but Gina's like, yeah, because I feel so bad. Like, it's really not OK with Alexis being here. She doesn't say with Alexis being here. But Shannon goes, 
you know what? I think I'm just going to walk right up to her and say, can we have a chat? And it seemed like a thought that she was having and like was milling around about. But literally she goes, I'm going to go do that. And but power bounces, power bounces over to where Alexis is. But Alexis isn't like off to the side by herself. She's like mid sentence talking to Katie and surrounded by other people. And Shannon just walks up and says, can we chat? And it really threw Alexis like, yeah, OK, all right. Like, whoa, wasn't anticipating that. <laughs> OK. But then Shannon Shannon takes Alexis outside to have the conversation. And then you don't see who she's talking to. But Shannon's like, can we just move this over there? Somebody? Like such a Karen, like being so annoying. But then no one's helping her. So then she just starts pulling over this chair. And it is so loud. So, so loud. The women are all inside now listening. I actually got kind of irritated that they kept cutting back over to them just to like show them listening. I know that there were like funny moments to it, but I was like, I just want to hear their dialogue. Shut the fuck up. I don't need, I get it. They're looking, they're listening, like move it along. It wasn't as funny as they kind of kept, cut. they were cutting off conversation. Hurry it up. So Shannon opens with the lawsuit and it I, it probably throws Alexis off because she's like, what the lawsuit? Like, and so for Shannon, but she's like, I know that you had something to do with it. And so I'm not interested in being best buddies with you. And I hope you can understand that. And it's like, I don't really think Alexis was in the market for that. And I don't really think that that's the issue here. But that was a really good try. And so Alexis gets to say, I'm not asking to be best buddies. And I know this is uncomfortable for both of us when you're the ex and I'm the new. I'm like, is your whole personality going to be that you're dating John Jansen? Because like, that's not a power move, Alexis. It's not like the coolest power move that you could pull, you know. But then she's like, I had nothing to do with the lawsuit. And Shannon tries to interrupt. And Alexis goes, please don't talk. I didn't talk when you were talking. And Shannon goes, oh, oh, okay. Getting a little angry now. Because <laughs> then Alexis has to go, that's not anger. And she's like, okay. But Alexis's confessional is so cringe. She's like, you're mad. I have the boyfriend and you're not going to win the battle with him. You will not. She almost has a British accent. You will not. You shall not win the battle for John Jansen that only I am a part of right now because no one else is clamoring for John fucking Jansen. Shannon is like, your name was on the letter. I will dig it up. And Alexis goes, are we really going to rehash something from three years ago? Or do you want to live? And Shannon interrupts and goes, are you going to write me a check for $300,000? <laughs> what? Why would Alexis write you that check? This is a little bit of a reach. No, a lot of bit of a reach. How about that? And Alexis goes, show me the letter. Dig it up. Show me the letter with my name on it. Oh, so you don't think you wrote it. I think the issue here, Shannon, is I have your boyfriend. So guess what? Move on. We're moving forward in this relationship. Here's what's going to happen. I'm not going to talk to you anymore about that court case that's been over and done with. And then Shannon goes into the very highest octave that she can get and says, I'm still out money. It's not done for me. It's never done. It's never done. Never. Never done. Alexis goes, you're never going to get a dollar from me. And if you don't like it, there's the door, Shannon Bador. And she started walking away. And <laughs> I wish Shannon hadn't yelled back, but it was fucking hysterical. That she's like, hey, and another thing, just so you know. And Alexis like, move on, let it go. She's like, take John Jansen. And I thank you for taking him from me, Alexis. And Alexis goes, and I'm thankful that he left you. And Shannon looks right at the camera and goes, perfect. <laughs> that was so well timed. It was like a sitcom. Perfect. <laughs> I, the, like she's, I can't, I'm not going to take any of their flowers away. They all did a great job. Every single one of them. <laughs> such a good, such a good premiere. I'm thrilled. Alexis looks crazy. Um, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I know, I know what's gonna happen though. 
Tamara's going to take it too far with like going against Shannon. And then it's we're going to side with Shannon. That's what happened when Heather came back to the show. We thought it was going to be the Shannon takedown season. And then it just wasn't because they went too hard. It's Kendrick on Sunday at the wrap up. Kendrick's like, it's just, you know, let me do it because <laughs> that's we both want Shannon to be held accountable. But she's like Teflon. I can't argue with that. Like, I cannot deny her skills for not dealing with things the way maybe like one would hope. But, you know, she's she's Shannon. She's Shannoning. OK. All right, guys, that wraps up today. Um, if you haven't already seen, I've posted my schedule, the summer schedule for She's Speaking. Um, it is on Instagram, threads, on and on YouTube, right? And on the Patreon. So just FYI, I'm trying so hard to adhere to a consistent schedule. I'm a little scared. I hope I get these episodes up to you at the same time every Friday. Like I say, as of now, I'm saying 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and I think I should do it today. But if you're seeing, if this didn't load until after five, it's because it took me longer. Um, anyway, all right, guys, love ya. Mean it. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to She's Speaking with Emily Hanks. This show is produced, hosted, and edited by me, Emily, and brought to you in partnership with Cloud10 Media. If you are looking for bonus content, check out the Patreon. The link is in the description. To show some support, you can hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Another free way to support the pod, please rate and or review on whatever platform you listen. It's free and it helps the algorithm or something. You can also head to buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks and buy me a coffee or two. Make sure you're following me on all social medias. I am She's Speaking with Emily Hanks across all platforms, threads, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. That's it. Thank you guys. See you soon.